Reviewing last week session, Yad Soledet Bo. Yad Soledet Bo. Remember those terms because it's like a building. You, we, we putting now the, the, the rules and the foundations, and then we're building on those foundations. So those are very, very common uh, terminologies that would be used constantly again and again. First thing is Yad Soledet Bo. You always have to think Yad Soledet Bo, which means any question that comes in the kitchen, usually it was either a heat of Yad Soledet or less than Yad Soledet. If it's less than Yad Soledet, almost always you'll have no problem. Except some scenarios with that we'll speak about. Normally, if it's not Yad Soledet, you're all good. If it is Yad Soledet, you're running into questions, and then you have to bring up all the other terms we'll be speaking to, about. What is Yad Soledet? Yad Soledet, we said, in Celsius, it's 40 to 45 degrees. There's, two, there's different opinions that varies between those numbers, which is in Fahrenheit, 104 and 113. So this is important to know not only for Kashrut, it's also important to know for Shabbat, for Chod Bishul, that come across on Shabbat, this is the, the heat level that you, you, that you have to be concerned with. When you have Yad Soledet, you run into a question, and then you bring the other terms. What were the other terms? The other terms we used are Kli Rishon. Kli Rishon means the first uh, Kli utensil that was used on the fire, where, whether it is still on the fire, or you removed it from the fire, it still has the ability to cook. It still has the ability to process the food. What does it mean to cook? On Shabbat, cooking is a so. So if you have a klirishon, let's say you have the chulen pot, you, mo- you removed it, you took it off the, the hot plate, and now it's on the table. And you just want to put in there something that's not cooked, that, w- that is a problem. Why? Because it has the ability to cook, and something that has the ability to cook is not permitted on Shabbat. If you take that chulant and you pour it into your plate, the plate is already klishini, then it doesn't have the ability to cook anymore, and we explain that on Shabbat, you'll have some that would be machmir, the Ashkenazim are much more machmir and klishini, and you always have a question also in Klishani, if it's Kalea Bishul, something that cooks very quickly, you'll, uh, you'll have an issue with that as well. That is for Shabbat, for the Alachot of Kosher Kitchen, which is, has to do with Basar Bechalav, Isurim, all kind of things that would end up in your pot, in your plate, in the kitchen. You also have that difference, just in in, in Isurim, you don't have to have the din of Bishul. It doesn't have to process it and change the form of it. Like, for instance, you have a chicken, a raw chicken. You put it in Klirishon, it, co- it makes it into a processed cooked chicken. It changes the form of it. But on, uh, on Isurim, it doesn't have to go all the way to actually cook it as Shabbat. Rather, in Isurim, it's called Mavliya or Maflit, which means Mavliya means... It pushes in the taste of Isur, the flavor of Isur, the, the juices of the things that's Asur, whether it's basar b'chalav, basar, a piece of meat, or a piece of cheese, they, they penetrate one into the other, and it would be something that's not permitted. This is called klirishon. When you have both together, klirishon and yatzoledet, we said that is a problem. We mentioned... Last week, the klishani is something that one needs to be careful. Lechatchila. Lechatchila, you don't do things even in klishani. And lechatchila, if you had something in klishani and it's a minor loss, let's say you made coffee, and you can make another coffee, you made it into klishani, there was a problem of uh, klishani. Let's say you took, you made coffee, and then you took your fleshic knife, your fleshic uh, spoon, after you put the milk in it, and it's still Yad Soledet, but it's in Klishani, because it's in the cup. You didn't cook the cup on the fire. You cooked in an urn, or you cooked in a pot, and you, sp- you spill the water into the cup, 
And now th- you pour the milk. So that's klishani, whether the cup was fleshik, besari, or using now a spoon to stir the milk. And that spoon you just used for meat. Then you'll have yourself an issue of klishani. Klishani, is it asur or mutar? If it's a coffee that costs you almost nothing, it's 10 cents per coffee, it's instant coffee, you put a little bit of milk, you can spill it, that's the best thing to do. If not, that's the only coffee you have, or uh, it's something that's considered by you something that, uh, that's a loss. So then, klishani would be permitted. Don't continue drinking it in the fleshy cup, we said, you spill it into a milk cup, and then drink it. We spoke about ladle, we said that ladle as well, when you have the ladle in putting it into the pot, whether it's on the fire or off the fire, we said that if you take and you put it inside and you leave it there for a few seconds, it becomes also clearishon, the ladle itself. So when you pick it up, that soup becomes clearishon, nafkamina, you picked it up now with the soup, it's a hot chicken soup, and you spill it into something that was uh, dairy. You have over here a question of clearishon, irui, we're going to speak about those terms today again. But this is considered Klishon because it was bubbling inside the pot that was bubbling. So the whole, the whole thing got connected. It, got, it started bubbling within the... Well, it doesn't have to get to the bubbling point. Bubbling is already called Reticha. It's boiling. Boiling is a much higher degree um, than, than what we call Yatsoledet. It's actually twice as much. If you put it in and take out right away... Mamash, like within a second, put it in and take out the soup. So then we're considering that klishani. That ladle didn't have the ability yet to get hot. And it's considered klishani. And if you spill it, let's say, over something that was dairy, let's say a dairy uh, bowl, it doesn't make anything a soup. If you leave it there for a couple of seconds, not too long, a few seconds, not enough that it actually had the ability to get heated up, so then we said that the Arucha Shulchan, the Shulchan Arucha Rav, and other poskim say that it makes a difference if it was on the fire that you use the ladle, or it's off the fire. If it's on the fire, it's more strict. You'll consider that ladle clearly shown. And if it's off the fire, it doesn't have any more that push of the fire that keeps on hitting it. It's like a momentum of fire that goes on, t- on the bottom and, keep, and, and keeps on hitting it. Then you'll consider that clearly Shani. The dinim of um, kli that's considered pagum. It's eno ben yomo. Something that's not ben yomo. It wasn't used within the last 24 hours. The taste within that keli is considered pagum. It's not anymore a good flavor, a good taste. Because of that, it doesn't have the ability to make anything a soul. So let's say you have right now a pot that is a meat pot, and you came home, you just took it and put milk in there to heat up. After it started heating up, it got to the heat level of Yatsoledet. That is when you run into the problem. It is Yatsoledet. You always have to have the question right now. It's a clear shown. It's Yatsoledet. You always have to have the question right now, is it Ben Yomo? Was it used within the last 24 hours? If it wasn't used within the last 24 hours, it's considered Pagum. The flavor in it is ruined, is foul. And therefore, it doesn't have the ability anymore to make the milk that you are cooking asur. It doesn't have the ability to put the meat flavor into the milk that you are boiling inside that pot. And therefore, it would be, the milk would be permitted. You take the milk, you spill it into a different pot, a milk pot, and you, con- and you continue in cooking it. Or if you cooked it already, you take it and you spill it into any other thing that you want after it was finished, and that is fine. The pot itself would need to have hechshel, because you have a meat pot that you cooked in it, milk. Now, I see I said something that was a, that's a bombshell, because I see a lot of faces that are... Not not so happy with this. Yes. I just wanted to know regarding earlier. Anyway. Oh, so we we're gonna we're gonna speak about those things. Yes, we're gonna speak about u- different utensils. Yes. In regards to the ladle, is it, does it happen also if the ladle is plastic or only if it's metal? <coughs> Same thing. 
It, we're not we're not dealing right now with absorption. We'll speak about that when we get to Agalat Kelim and things like that. But right now we're dealing with the fact that the 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 soup that's inside the pot gets constantly cooked, and now that you put the ladle inside and the heat is there, and you leave it there for a few seconds, right? You leave it for five seconds, seven seconds, whatever it is, ten seconds. So it's inside water that is uh, that is uh, constantly heated up, and it heats up as well the ladle, and everything becomes very hot. And because of that, you consider that clearly shown. It does not make a difference what material it is. Although you're right, when we're dealing with metal, there's more of uh, it, it, it transmits more fire. It pushes to the whole ladle, even to the handle, the, the heat. Why is that? Because we have a concept called in matechet, in, uh, in metals, cham miktsato, cham kulo, which means, if you, you always see that, that you'll use a metal spoon, you put it inside, and all of the, or, or your pot, if it doesn't have a plastic handle, it has a metal handle, you can't touch it. Because it's so hot, why? Metal has that, uh, that, what is it called? Conductor, that's it. Nat Barnat. We spoke about Nat Barnat, very, very important concept. We said Nat Barnat means, what is it called? First stages, second stages. Not but not, we said that the example is the following. You have over here um, stages of how the heat um, transfers. So you have a pot, let's say it's a meat pot, and you put in there a potato to cook. How did the potato get the flavor from the pot? First, the, the pot is a meat pot, which means you had to cook in it meat within 24 hours. And the flavor of the meat, the taste of the meat, entered the walls of the pot. And now the pot itself is absorbed with meat taste. That's called Kli Ben Yomo, that received the, the, the taste of the meat. Now you put in there potatoes. That potato receives the taste that went into the walls of the pot and it goes and enters the potato. That's called nut bar nut, which means it's a second flavor already, second taste. Remember that. Something like that, that potato now, you can take it out, put it on the plate, put cheese on top of it and eat it. Ashkenazim don't do that. Only if it happened that you put the cheese, you forgot, or your husband was home and he put it, right? So then that they're allowed to eat it. That's By Sfaradim, you could do that without any problem. If it's Eino Ben Yomo, if your pot was not used within 24 hours, you can do it without any problem. You can take your pot and you can to cook your potato and you can put a, the, the, the cheese on top of it, and even Ashkenazim would allow that. There's one posek, the marshal, there was machmir, but la halacha, even the Ashkenazim allow it. Yes? What's the difference between 24 hours and not the 24 hours? Again, when your pot, again, let's talk about this nat bar nat. If your pot is ben yomo, which means you just finished using it for meat, you cleaned it, it's clean, it's clean. And you put potatoes in it. Now, obviously, it's only an example. You can put potatoes, you can put eggs, you can put whatever, macaroni, whatever it is. We're just using an example for something that is parv. You put potatoes in it, and you cook them. After you finish cooking, can you put cheese? You took it off the pot. It's a meat pot. Took it off the pot, you put it now in a separate pot, on the plate. Can you take now cheese, put it on top, and eat it that way? It's machloket Ashkenazim and Sfaradim. According to Sfaradim, it's permitted. According to Ashkenazim, it's not permitted to do it unless you put it already. By mistake, you put it there, somebody else put it together. So you're allowed to eat it. That is if it's ben yomo. That is if the pot was used within 24 hours with meat. But let's say your pot was not used with meat today. It was used 24 hours ago, more than 24 hours ago. More than 24 hours ago, you made... 
meat, right? Now it's 7.30, let's say. Yesterday, at 7 o'clock, you made meat in it. So by 7.30 today, 24 hours passed, it's called Eino Ben Yomo. When you have something that is not Ben Yomo, you allow the Chathila to make that potato in there and eat it with cheese without any problem. Yes? Is it according to Chacham to an as well? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's go weiter. This was a quick summary from last week. One more thing. We spoke about Kavush that we speak about today as well. You know what? Leave it for what we're talking about right now. So if we flipping the page, we have over here now the different way that uh, something could become a soul. And you have over here a list of things. Cooking, soaking, pouring, salting, uh, smell, which is the aroma, steam, which is the zea, steam that comes up. And in the list you have over here solid food, liquid food, and we'll see how to deal with each and every one of those. So, we start with cooking. Cooking is a simple uh, thing that anybody understands, that cooking is when you have something that is, let's say, solid, that falls into milk. You have a piece of meat that falls into milk, and it starts cooking there. What's the level of heat that is considered cooking, yet so let it. We're going to be repeating some things over and over again, because those things have to be, it's called like a drill process. You have to drill it in order to uh, to really like put it into your, your kishkas. Okay? So if you ask me, Rabbi, you said that already 200 times. That is true. But uh, I'll tell you what, in yeshivot, they know that the only way to understand the sugiah is to drill it over and over and over again. Chazal say that in no dome, it's not equal. A person that learns something a hundred times or so a hundred and one times. A hundred and times, Chachamim tell us that is Oved Elohim, and a hundred times is Eino Oved Elohim. A person that learns something a hundred and one times is considered Oved Elohim. That's Chazal say. A hundred times, still not over the looking. So we're going to try to go with a hundred and time, one time in order to understand well and to be over the looking. So we're talking about cooking. Cooking is anything that is yatsoledet and something falls in there. Examples. You have a piece of meat that falls into milk that's on the fire, off the fire. It got to the level of yatsoledet. That will make the meat problematic and the meat will make the meat problematic, it will make it a soul. Okay. Same thing would be, th that is whether the meat is hot or the meat is cold. You have a piece of cold meat that fell into the hot milk, it's also um, problematic because the hot milk would cook the meat. And even if it doesn't stay there for too long, it doesn't have to actually sit there and start cooking. You realize right away, you put your finger in there and you pull it out, and you still have a problem. But you have a different scenario. What would be if you have, by the way, we'll have all questions afterwards if we can, if we, you have in the back uh, empty, uh, empty pages. And if somebody wants to write their questions, they're more than welcome. We'll try to answer all of them. What happens if you have, listen to this um, idea, a person that has milk that is cold, in the pot, he's planning to cook. He has it on the pot. And on top, he has right now a meat that's cooking. A big pot like this of meat. And a small pot on the bottom of milk. He didn't even turn the fire on. But the meat is hot and it's cooking and it's all the way to the top. You have a lot of people for Shabbat and you put a lot of meat in there and it starts cooking. Or chicken that is cooking into the... And by mistake, you like hit the pot of meat and a piece of chicken that's boiling into in, in the water, in the soup, or a piece of meat, falls, and boop, it ends up, always ends up in the milk. That's mm -hmm. always, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> so it ends up in the milk. Now, you have something that is called tata gaval. Remember that concept, write it down, tata gaval. It means the bottom always has power over the top. Always 
ha- is, is overpowers the top, which means if the bottom is hot, it will cook the top. If the bottom is cold, it will cool down the top. So since something, same thing would be, uh, yeah, Tata Gavar means again, the bottom overpowers. Am I saying this correctly? Gavar? Tata Gavar? Tata, ta, taf, taf, aleph, hey, tata, gavar, gimel, bet, resh. Okay? So, if that piece of meat, it doesn't have to be in a soup scenario that's, that we explain right now, you had a, a, a hot piece of meat, and it fell on the piece of cheese that you had on the, on the table. You took that pot that you just made, or, or the fryer that you, ma- you just made, the schnitzels, and it's still like sizzling on top. You see that uh, the oil is still hot. It just came off the fire. It's had so let it, and boom, by mistake, it falls, ends up on the cheese. So that's called tata gavar. What's the din? Since the bottom is cold, it cools down the top. Over here, we have the concept called Kdei Klipa. What does it mean, Kdei Klipa? Kdei Klipa means a shell, which means the ability to make the, the top and the bottom asur, forbidden, is only up to Kdei Klipa. Kdei Klipa, I'll explain in a second what's Kdei Klipa. But first of all, I want you to understand, if the bottom is hot, whether the top is hot or the, the top is cold, it will make everything a soul. Everything becomes forbidden. It has the power to transfer, to transmit the, the taste into the entire piece, on the bottom and on the top. Everything becomes a soul. But if the bottom is cold and the top is hot, If the bottom is cold and the top is hot, which we call right now Tata Gavar, Chachamim tells us that it's only, it only makes it a su Kedei Klipa. What's Kedei Klipa? How much is Kedei Klipa? Why is, first of all, why is Kedei Klipa? Because, again, it doesn't have the ability to cook completely. Just Chachamim say that by, since there's some kind of heat that comes from on top, so that itself has a certain ability as well. At the maker le balak de klipa, which means until it actually is able to cool it down, the bottom can cool the top down, it has the ability to make it a little bit asu. And how much is kedei klipa? Kedei klipa is a small amount that if you have, let's say, a potato, you'll cut a small amount of it. If it comes out as one piece, or pe- potatoes may be the breakdown, but you take something else. Let's say you take a big piece of cheese. You cut a small, small amount. It's small enough, it's very, very thin, but it has to be enough that you can pull it out as one piece. So, it could be a very thin piece, but as long as it comes up as one piece, it doesn't break down because it's too thin. That's called Kedei Klipa, and that's only the amount that will become a soul. Okay, so we learned over here something that's very important. Well, that's what you need to do. You peel it. Or you measure, we'll learn all these things, but first the concepts. You'll peel it, right? Let's say over here in our scenario that it fell into, uh, into a big piece of cheese that you, not, yeah, it's not an American cheese that's already sliced, that you can't, right? The monster that you can't. You have a piece of a nice, a nice amount of a block of cheese and a piece of meat fell on top of it. Do you need to throw that whole thing out? No. What do you need to do? You take a small piece from the cheese. And the small piece from the chicken, okay? We're not t- talking now, there's, there's more into it, there's more details into it. I don't want to get um, complicated, there's much more details into it, but at least for the concept. Only if the bottom is cold, which is called Tata Gavar, that is the rule of Tata Gavar. And that is at the maker le balak de klipa. Since the bottom is cold, so it should, it should cool down completely everything, and, and you just have to wash it, and that's all. Why is it that if you take off Kedei Klipa, why you take off that small layer? Because at the maker layer, until it has the ability to cool it down, 
because it's a, right now a war goes on between the, the, the cheese and the chicken on top. Who's going to win over? So the, co- the cheese is cold, is trying to cool down the whole thing. And the chicken is hot, is trying to heat up the whole thing. Who wins? Who's on top? The thing, the thing that's on the bottom. The bottom is on top. First day, you always need to know. It's a, it's a Musara scale. When you're on the bottom, you always end up on top. Why? Because you're on the bottom. Nobody can push you lower. That's it. When you're on the bottom, you always end up on top. Yes? So, I want to make sure I understand. If we have cold milk, and the hot chicken falls in, then you're saying you should wait for the hot chicken to fully cool, cool down in that cold no. milk? No. But definitely you take it off. You There's no it. question about it. You take the chicken away, you separate between the two. First of all, you separate the two. And then, after you separated, you cut off a small piece of cheese. Very thin. Again, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, gi- I'm just giving examples right now. We'll see. It's more complicated than that because there's other things that's going to come up as well. Things that are uh, uh, shumani. They have some kind of. Yes. Yes. In the chicken, let's say you take off the skin and you're all good. What about the cold milk? Oh, so the cold milk is. Be pashtut okay. Some say that you have to measure sixty against the skin, which we'll learn also. Right now, definitions. Right now, definitions. True. Oh, so so we'll, we, we we said we said we did we're dealing right now with definitions. So as long as we get definitions, then once you have definitions, then you have all the all the players. When it comes to the questions, you'll know how to use the players, right? But we're dealing with definitions. So we'll leave, it, leave all the questions to the end. We're going to have a lot of things answered along the way. And afterwards, we'll take questions. Let me talk to you right now that we spoke about Tata Gavar. We spoke about cooking. We're going into something that we already spoke about, and that is soaking. What is soaking called? Kavush. Chachamim tell us Kavush Kim Vushal. We spoke about this last week. And we're reviewing. Kavushkin Vushal means that something that is soaked, something that is, is sitting inside a liquid for 24 hours, also is considered as it was cooked. Sometimes something could, could become even much quicker, Kavush, and that is if you have something that's very uh, sour, very salt, so- yes, yes, acidic. So then it could be 18 minutes also. They soak the chicken in milk. Yes, so that, that is, that is, that will become a soul after 24 hours. If something sits inside liquid for 24 hours, it gets the flavor of that thing, right? It gives and takes flavor. So if you have, let's say, a Kelly, you have something over here that's meat, meat pot, and you put in there milk for 24 hours, it was just used for, mi- for meat. And as soon as you use it for meat, before it has the ability to become pagum, which means 24 hours past, it's a question that the Taz and the Shah ask in Siman Kufay, that it seems like a contradiction. Because you use a pot that's a fleshic pot to have milk in- inside sitting for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the milk will become asur because of the meat. That's inside the pot. But after 24 hours, the pot itself becomes pagum. How does it have the ability to make the milk a soul? But that's a, that's a question that the Mephoshim asks for us. We need to know that if something was sitting there 24 hours, as soon as the meat was taken out of the hot pot, you cleaned it and right away you put the milk, it would become kavush. Kavush would, have, would happen only if it, without changing, the, let's say, its milk in the meat pot, without changing the, the milk, without, uh, let's say, it gets, it gets frozen. You put it into the freezer, right? Sometimes you're having to freeze some things, and milk falls in them. So 24 hours will make it a soul, even though it's cold. It's cold. It's sitting in milk. It will become a soul. That is true if it didn't get frozen. If it got frozen, it's not any more liquidy. It wouldn't become a soul. Only if it's sitting in liquid for 24 hours. Okay, that's an idea called 
kavush kimvushal. Last week we spoke about practical questions like this that were uh, that came up. That let's say you left your dishes in uh, in the sink with uh, let's say it's a meat part that uh, the 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 chulen part, and uh, many people just leave uh, water in the chulen part so, so everything would loosen up. And you don't have to, when you do dishes, crab. It comes out much easier. You leave it there for a long time. Let's say you left it there for 24 hours. It happened to be that the dairy spoon also fell in there. If the dairy spoon fell in there, and there's meat in there as well in that children pot, after 24 hours, you'll have yourself that spoon that's dairy, uh, it would become a soup, it would become taref, it would need a uh, shell. Knife is in there, so it becomes meat. Yes. Oh. Is it only if there's meat in the pan, or also if there's only water in the pan? Please. Only if there's actual meat. Okay. But we'll we we'll get all the concepts. You'll you'll realize how to answer because there's details of how to answer each and every question. I'm just so we'll speak. We'll we'll take questions soon. Okay. We're just getting the concept right now very quickly. Irui, irui. We just spoke about irui, and I'll mention again. Irui is pouring. What's irui? You have something on top that's liquidy, or it doesn't have to be liquidy, and you pour from on top. What is the status right now if you pour something from on top? You put something from the top to the bottom. We said before, tata gavar, we explained the whole concept, it fits over here. Again, the same ideas, irui is tata gavar, tata gavar, we said the bottom wins, it's, it, uh, it, it, overrides the top, and therefore if the bottom is hot, it will make the, the whole thing a sur. If the bottom is cold, and the top is hot, then it will be the amount that we explained before.